In today's video, I'll be using the Above the Tie S1 Slant Razor, as well as Bear Stern Man's The Full Measure of Man, coming right up. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, John, and for today's shave, we have quite a few new items in the den. And so I'll be bringing you my first impressions on a few things. First is the Above the Tie, S1 Slant Razor, and this is on loan from me, from uh, Ben of House of Mammoth. So thank you, Ben, for the loaner on this razor. I'll also be giving you my first impressions on the new soap from Barrister and Man, The Full Measure of Man. Really curious on this one. This is their take on a masculine tobacco scent. This will also be my first go with the brush right here from That Darn Rob, now known as Chisel and Hound. I was able to pick up uh, this one and one other one for a steal uh, on the used marketplace on Facebook. And since I've pretty much named all the other parts of the shave, we'll be finishing things up with Bear Stir and Man's Unscented Aftershave Balm. So let me get that brush loaded up and I'll come back for the face lather and we'll talk more about this scent, The Full Measure of Man. If you'd like to help the channel, Please like, share, and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. These are all easy ways to support and grow the channel if you're enjoying what you're watching. I'd also like to invite you all to come check out the new Lather Talk Discord server. It's a great place to chat and hang out with your fellow wet shaving enthusiasts. All right, so the brush is loaded up and you can see I've applied the Proto Lather as a pre-shave. And right off the bat, upon opening the tub, upon those initial swirls, this is a strong, bold, and I'm gonna say polarizing scent right out of the gate. So I don't think there's really any you know, in between. It's gonna be a love or hate, I think, for most people. And we'll get to the notes and a couple more uh, in-depth perceptions. But let's get that face lather going before too much time uh, has escaped us. So as far as scent strength, this is medium strong or just plain strong. And while I'm rethink rethinking using, you know, the whole, you know, this many out of 10 um, meter to describe scent strength, I mean, I was, I would pretty firmly put this as seven or eight out of 10. So. Strong, medium, strong. And the official scent notes on this one are uh, cured tobacco, sandalwood, mousse de sax, which is a very unique kind of musky accord um, uh, Barrister Man uses in a few scents. It's also got citrus, Vanilla, myrrh, and geranium. Backtracking to the mousse de sax. I always forget what exactly is a composition, but it's this, um, it's this combination of notes that also appear in Barrister and Man La Vanille, Baudelaire, both of which I'm kind of iffy on as far as scents, but it's also found in Vespers, one of my all-time favorites from Barrister and Man. I don't know, there's something, there's something, there's like an air of refinement around it too. So how that plays together in this scent, The Full Measure of Man, I'll, I'll double down on, it's, it's a masculine tobacco. I had been told it was on the sweet side, but it's not, there's some sweetness to it, but I wouldn't call it necessarily a sweet scent. And of all the notes I listed off to you, I think it's that cured tobacco and mousse de sax and vanilla are the, the ones that would pop out. I, I, could, I could identify those without looking at the official scent notes. And there's an underlying woodiness as well. So what I'm picturing is Kind of the, uh, <laughs> the reference might be masterpiece theater, but really any kind of classy, um, kind of old school li uh, library, reading room with a really fine, expensive, antique even leather, leather chair. 
There's an air of sophistication in this scent. Something traditional, something masculine. Kind of cracking open a literary classic with a side of scotch or some, some sort of luxurious alcoholic beverage and round that picture out by a really classy uh, pipe, pipe tobacco. And the thing that looks like a robe, a smoking jacket. That kind of, that kind of is what this scent, um, that's the imagery that the scent is bringing to mind. I almost forgot to mention the brush from That Darn Rob. It is half resin, half wood. I'm not exactly sure of the details. Again, I got this one used, but I do know it's loaded with a V4 Fanchurian knot. And I've only used the V1, maybe the V2 from, from That Darn Rob. So it's been a while, but the very soft knot with enough backbone, uh, no problems with the face lather, which actually is all done now. Uh, I am working with three days worth of beard growth. And lastly for the blade in the Above the Tie S1, it's a fresh Repira Platinum Lux blade. So let's give this one a go. Uh, ben really wanted me to try this out because despite, despite it being a slant razor, which the only one I've tried before is one from Razorock. And that one had a good amount of blade feel, a good amount of efficiency, and overall a aggressive razor. Uh, ben mentioned that this one from ATT uh, was actually quite smooth. So I want to make sure I had enough beard growth. Uh, it, it was kind of silly just to do it with one day's worth of growth. So three days probably should be a more than adequate test. So really curious how it goes. Let's, let's have at it. All right, well, I am... All right, so not too far into the shave, you know, the razor isn't overly aggressive by any means, not too much blade feel. Slant razors have a really, really unique geometry. Uh, it torques the blade to kind of accomplish, uh, I think it gives a unique feel and also aids in the actual cutting of the hair. Very comfortable, very comfortable. And it is removing the hair too, quite nicely. It also seems that I've underhydrated the lather a bit. I did go for a quite heavy load, so let me just rehydrate here a little bit. As, I, as I'm finishing up this first pass, let me give you a little bit more information. So above the tie, S1, it's made of 303 stainless steel. It's manufactured in the USA. And the blade gap on this one is 0.61 millimeters. And I would, I would venture a guess that other, other popular slant razors Probably have more of a blade gap than that, but that's kind of a quick, quick rundown of details. Let me rinse up since the first pass is all set. We'll lather up for the against the green pass. All right, so here we go in for the second pass with the S1. So going back to the scent, there's there's more I want to talk about. When I first opened the tub. Uh, to get the initial, you know, in initial impressions. The tobacco in it actually really reminded me of the tobacco used by Katie's Bubbles in both Connecticut Shade and Porch Drinks. And how I would describe that very unique tobacco note it has a certain sharpness uh, to the aroma. A little musty, even. 
kind of what I was describing the you know, like a like an old leather uh, leather chair, uh, a library of you know kind of antique books. There's something in it that is aged, that has some years on it, maybe some decades on it. The whole you know with with age, there's wisdom. And as I mentioned before, you know, the Mousse de Sax, it's used in La Vanille and Baudelaire, which I both own, but don't own anymore because uh, neither of those scents really were things that I wanted to go back to. For a while, I actually thought uh, of just soaring off you know, any, any of the Barrister Man scents that use that Mousse de Sax, but that was proven proven wrong when I took a chance on Vespers and fell in love with it. And so far, just in the use for today's shave, I would say I like uh, The Full Measure of Man more than I do La Vanille and Baudelaire, but not as much as Vespers. It's certainly unique though. And you can you can pick it. It's it's like a calling card for for Barrister Man, I would say. All right. Well, while I was kind of trying to find words to describe the scent, second pass is done. Let's rinse up and go for the third and final pass. All right. So in lathering for the third and final pass, I was getting more hits of that geranium, and. I know geranium is used in other classic aftershaves, so I think that floral floral component is definitely adding to kind of the, the vintage feel of this one. Now I'm trying to determine My, my feelings on the scent because I like it for sure. It's a really unique take on tobacco uh, amongst the soaps that I own. And I, I'll probably need to use this a few more times more to really make up my mind. Because kind of like with certain foods, uh, there's certain ones that you can't, they're special, you come to every now and then, but would get ruined as a every day or even like as a regularly consumed dish. Mousse de Sacks is kind of like that for me. There's something really intriguing to it. Uh, yeah, there's something really intriguing about it to my nose. But at the same time, if it winds up being something I, I only use like once a year or something that that might not make sense as far as um, have you know having it permanently uh, in my collection all right so that was, that was a very enjoyable shave with a number of new items in my den uh, the first go with the above the tie s1 I think this is this is a really friendly slant razor. Uh, as far as efficiency, uh, I'll be using this again for my next shave, but I, I think it does a great job with, again, you don't feel like too much of the blade at all, and just all around a very smooth shaver. So just to finish things up, let's put on the unscented balm. Some people like uh, having the pump, the pump better, but I, I don't mind having the whole, the whole tub just accessible. I feel like it gives me more control over how much product I can use. All right, so with the shave done, here are my final thoughts on the full measure of man. This is a re really unique, very specific barrister and man take on the tobacco scent. It smells very gentlemanly, very masculine, uh, it's got an old school vibe to it, yet it doesn't smell exactly like anything else I've come across before. 
other than that Musta sax note that connects it to um, other scents like Baudelaire and La Vanille. I will say that if you've tried either of those scents and were not fans, you probably won't be a fan of this one. For majority of wet shavers who uh, might shy away from quote unquote unique scents or interesting scents, uh, this is a try before you buy for sure. And just like what I mentioned when I talked about Eigengrau from uh, Barrister and Man, there's a place for unique scents. There's a place for um, these kind of offerings for shavers who in really enjoy that aspect, who sometimes want something a little more challenging or just want something a little different. You know, if anything, I think that cured tobacco note uh, found in the scent actually makes it more accessible because it's a starting point that a lot of people, a lot of shavers will be familiar with. But then the scent kind of takes you for a ride, takes you to maybe some unfamiliar places as some of the other notes reveal themselves uh, throughout the shave. So again, a really interesting scent and I think a really nice addition to the lineup of Barrister and Man scents. As we're wrapping up, I want to thank you guys so much for taking some time out of your day for checking out this first impressions on all the things I use today on the soap, on the razor, even the brush a little bit. I really appreciate your time and support. I hope you guys have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Take care.